I'm Jasmine Harmon, and I've lived with my mother's compulsive hoarding all my life. I'm telling you, I'm keeping those. If that isn't with your agreement, then we have to fall out. With help, my mum's made huge improvements, and now I want to help other hoarders around the country who are living in terrible conditions. I'm feeling desperate because I can't cope with it. This isn't me. Uh, this isn't me living like this. I am shocked. It's literally a wall of stuff. These are people who have lost their homes and lives to hoarding. It's going to feel like you can't make it, and that's totally normal. Oh, yeah. Do you want to spend no, the rest no. of your years with this hanging over you? Sorry, I can't do it. I want hoarders up and down the country to realise they aren't alone. Get rid. You can't well, use them, so that's a good yeah. decision you've made. I'm really mm. proud of you. Oh. And that with the right help, their lives can improve too. Really good to have my space back. Look what I have found. The things that I've found that I never actually knew that I had. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something wrong with me, which lots of other people have got, and uh, it can be cured. This year, hoarding disorder has been recognised as a distinct psychological condition. Despite the official recognition, families like mine are still living with the shame and secrecy of hoarding. Oh, it's blasted to her. Up to three million people are suffering, and there are few places they can turn for help. 87-year-old Olive has lived in this three-bedroom, semi-detached council house in Brighton since 1933. Her home is so full that she's forced to spend most of her day outside. I can't bear to throw away anything that can be recycled. I might see it lying about on the road and pick it up and bring it back. If I wanted a pram and I saw a decent pram, you know, yeah, bring it back. I don't hoard. I keep stuff that will be used again. The inside of Olive's house is full to the brim with thousands of plastic bags, old furniture and clothes. That's all aluminium. That can go there. She can't cook or use the bathroom at home, so gets her meals from the community centre where she also washes. I want it sorted out to be able to live in it. I mean, it's not uh, a place that you can invite anybody in because you can't get in there. Toby, where's your ball? Oh, somebody's taken that. Taken it and recycled it. That's me, I expect. I'd come across Olive in newspaper articles about the various battles she's had over her recycling. They mentioned that the interior of the house was also badly hoarded. She's agreed to meet me, but I don't know how she'll receive me. Hello. Oh, you must be Olive. Hello. You're doing all your recycling? Yes. Well, uh, it's such a muddle from the wind oh. last night, and then uh, this was normally in a proper order. Olive has never married or had children, so has no family to support her. She has only limited sight and is registered blind. Do you spend a lot of time here at home? No, not now. I'm out most of the time. I have to be out. I've got no means what of cooking. What about hot water? Have you got hot water? No, it's all cut off. It's all turned off. How would you feel about showing me around inside a little bit? Well, you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't go in there because I don't know what it's like. What do you mean? Well, I've not been able to go in since all this was piled up. But you, you sleep inside? Oh, of course I do. Yeah. I've got a bedroom, I sleep right. upstairs, yeah. Olive believes a move into temporary accommodation 13 years ago lies at the heart of her problems. She feels that when she was moved back home, the council failed to put her possessions back properly and this ultimately created the current chaos. And that's nothing to do with recycling. No. That's the council. 
Although Olive is reluctant to let anyone see inside her house, she agrees to let me have a look behind the door to see the scale of the problem. Oh, hello. Who's that? Who is it? Who is it? Not, wait a minute, not inside. Say again? No, I don't want you to go in there. Oh, no, I was just seeing if I could have a look. No, no, way. no. Don't want you to go in there. No. Almost immediately, I find out just how sensitive Olive is about strangers seeing inside her house. Hello. I don't know who the devil that was. I can't hear. Won't be a minute. That's all right. I don't know how she gets in and out in there. It's literally a wall of stuff. I'm, I'm actually, I am shocked. I think it was the first. It's definitely worse than my mum's house ever was. Can I ask you, Olive, you know, would getting into your house more easily Ooh. be important to you? I don't like living in that, um, it's like a muddle, really. OK. Couldn't be happy, could you? Hey? What? I mean, you couldn't be happy. Uh, I mean, poor cat has to, you know... <laughs> The Never mind, poor cat. Yeah, but what about poor you, 87 years old, climbing, <laughs> climbing up a mountain? Well, it keeps me fit. Olive has lived in this house virtually all of her life, but now she's unable to access most of the rooms due to her hoarding. Each night, she literally climbs over a wall of clutter to get to bed. The only way to access her home will be to somehow get the hallway emptied and sorted into a separate space. I was thinking if you take some stuff out, if we could create a space outside where things could be kept dry, we could do some sorting outside maybe. Well, I want to get it cleared you out. I want to get it cleared. Yeah. It's been really nice to meet you. Yeah, Thank nice. you for letting me have a peek inside. I will right. see you soon. Do you want me to come up? No, it's all right. Bye, Toby. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. I just, oh, I cannot get my head around it. It's more hoarded, if that makes sense, than any other house that I've seen. It seems like I'm on the back foot with it before I've even started. She's deep down very ashamed of the inside of the house and scared because she hasn't been into the kitchen or the back room or even the front room for years. She doesn't know what's there. The only one that's been through there is the cat. So God knows what's through there. I've been contacted by someone whose experience of hoarding reminds me very much of my own. In South London, Vicky and her brother have lived with their mum Janet's hoarding since they were small. In here is my mum's room. In their three-bedroom maisonette, the family squeezed through Janet's piles of possessions, trying to live a normal life. Vicky is a full-time student who looks after the household finances and works 12 hours a week in a part-time job. Even if I had a friend to say, oh, um, we would like to come around to your house, I would actually like tell them, oh, my mum's busy, like... She doesn't want anyone in the house. Or I try and make up lies. Like, who would want to bring someone here? It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I used to be too ashamed to invite people to my hoarded house when I was growing up, so I decided to meet Vicky <laughs> at a cafe. Have you ever tried to clear things out before with your mum? Um, not really. Even me, if I wanted to clear out my clothes, I'm not allowed to. She says, oh, I need to have her permission to clear out my own clothes. That is exactly <laughs> the, same. the same as when I was living at home. I was not even allowed to clear out my own possessions. But yeah. And if I threw something out in the bin, if I had a, you know. She will take it back out. And it was soon back inside <laughs> the house. 
But it's frustrating, but all you can do is laugh. Yeah, and if you don't laugh, you just cry. Yeah, because... but you don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I mean, what kind of thing do you think would be helpful for your mum? Support. In what kind of support? In, in terms of, like, counselling. That's the main thing, so she can realise... Just help and support in terms of that. Vicky's mum, Janet, arrived in England from Nigeria almost 25 years ago. She has limited English and is being treated for depression. Like many hoarders, she's become very used to living in chaos. Hello. Hi. So is this where you, you spend most of your time, Janet, in here? Uh, no, not really. Where Not you, really. Where do you spend your time in, when you're indoors? In the sitting room, bedroom. In your bedroom? Because I suffer from depression. Are you all right with having me here? Yes, I'm fine. And what do you think? Do you think there's anything that could help you feel better? Oh, well, let's see how it goes. I need help. Need. Oh, well, hopefully we can help. Okay. Hopefully we can help you. Okay, thank you. Janet's house has hundreds of suitcases full of clothes and materials from Nigeria. She also hoards blankets, duvets and childhood toys. So this is your mum's room, is it? Yep, this is her room. I don't know. So she just has a little bit of the bed to sleep on. Wow, she used to have more space than that. This is kind of similar to my mum's bedroom when she, you know, she used to just have a little bit of the bed that was available, all the rest of everything around was piled up and then it went up into the corner but right up to the ceiling and then it spread and spread. This is my room. Okay. Not all of it is my stuff. Okay. So you added the tables. I didn't, it was so much clearer before but I was like, I can't be asked to talk anymore. This is an area... I mean, if we're going to try and do some stuff in the house, maybe we could do your room. That's what I thought at first. So she can set example, look at this room, maybe my room could be like that. Do you know, when you live with something, mm. you stop seeing, you stop noticing. Sin. And I think that is very true of hoarding. So you live with it all around you mm -hmm. and you stop seeing it. Janet's hoarding is causing massive pressure in the family home. The way Janet's house is right now is the way my mom's house was when I lived at home. And after I left home, it got a lot worse than that. That could happen in exactly the same way with this family as it did with my family, if it's left unchecked. A couple of weeks after first meeting her, I'm going to see Olive in Brighton again to see if she really is ready to change. Olive has agreed to let us put up a large tent outside where the stuff from her hallway can be sorted. I've asked Andy Honey, who has worked with extreme hoarders before, to help. Are you OK me just temporarily moving these? Yeah. Just going to pop them here for a second. Just oh, yeah, yeah, I don't care where you put them. And then we can put the markers straight down here to the wall here. Oh, you're going to do it on this side, yeah? Yeah. So do you want me to... Um, I could be getting a few bits ready. Yeah, that would be now. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, at a leisurely pace. This like this bit I can do. Look, here, you don't... Yeah. I'm just moving, making my hips uh, slim. <laughs> I'll push it down here. Oh, oh. there we go. Oh. <laughs> We're in. We're in. Done it so well. Olive it's appears to be really, really motivated to get things oh, no. moving and much happier allowing me to go inside. But what confronts me is even more daunting than last time. There's some there. Do you know what, Olive? Yeah. It's even higher than it was before. Oh, yeah, because I can I've see got through food. to the kitchen before. I've got food stuff in there. Oh. All that but stuff. But here, before, I could no. see right through to the kitchen. And oh, now I can't see, unless I've oh. shrunk. 
No, all I can say is that um, I could have thrown stuff up there. With the scale of the task even bigger than I thought, I'm keen to get Olive clearing. So, did you want to start getting some stuff out while it's nice and dry and sunny and not might get really. wet? Not really. First off, I've got to leave some recycling out tonight and, and so I must do that. What have you got to do? Make sure there's no tin. Oh. Yeah. Long process. Why well, not really. Olive has recycled since the war and has been in conflict with the authorities about it for decades. My worry is that her constant yeah. recycling is yeah. distracting her from clearing. Yeah. This routine of the recycling is what Olive does day in, day out. But it is definitely partially avoidance no, no, with what she's got at home. The rest of that is all tin. Oof. Is it all tin? Mm. Yeah? Yeah, it's all tin. All dripping? Yeah. It's a bit oh, no. rank. I'm just getting a bit slightly anxious about the fact that it's going to get dark and we won't have been able to get much done for, in the hallway. Oh, yes, we will. Won't yeah? take long, yeah. Won't take long? Olive has a vast amount of recycling to sort through. It's mostly tins and packaging she picks up from the street. How are you feeling about getting started in the hall? Oh, it's going to get started, that's all. Good. Not Let's fun. do it. Right, food? I don't know, I think so. Let me check. Um, I've got to have this. I yes, of course. I can't add that out in the tent. That is... Um, Partly food and partly something else. Shall I have a um, look and take out the food? No, in the no, there? just leave it because I know I know what's there. Yeah. You know, I, I know Shall I leave it with your other bag that's got to stay as it is? Yeah, leave that as it All is. Right. Once Olive finally gets round to some clearing, it's at a very leisurely pace. I found me breakfast cereal. <laughs> oh, good. I've been looking for that for a week. Oh. Yeah. But if you want me to go in, I can you see probably. You can't get in there. No, I mean instead of you. No, no, I'd rather <laughs> do it because I know, I mean, I know how I've stacked stuff. OK. So I'll get some more paperwork. OK, uh, if you want. We're nearing the end of getting this stuff out here because it's all falling down. I think that if, if she would let you or me go in and move stuff out... Yeah. Obviously, we could do it in a day. And I can leg it backwards and forwards. I've brought a sack barrow down with me as well. Yeah. So, because she's got loads of boxes in that front room. Because uh, It's just the hallway that we've yeah. really got to tackle. Hello, Tobe. Are you fed up? Eh? Are you fed up, babe? Eh? All right, come and have a look at the tent before it gets too dark. OK. That's your paperwork there yeah. so far. Paper right there. Doesn't look so much now, does it? No. We can anyway, I'm going in. I'm not stopping out here, it's cold. Well, that's what I was worried about. That's why I thought it'd be better to do it indoors. Mm. One day in, an Olive's hallway looks largely unchanged. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh. It would have been easier when the stuff was here. <laughs> To have done this. I leave her climbing the mountain of rubbish to get to bed. See, the stairs clear there, but it's just. Ugh. I'm back in South London to see Janet, and I immediately sense the tension upstairs. How are you getting on with Victoria? Victoria starts screaming, shouting on my head today. Oh. This morning she starts shouting again. Have you been arguing since I've been gone away? No. You've been getting today. on all right until today? Uh, until today she's starting. Vicky has been to the council to sort out Janet's rent, narrowly avoiding eviction for the family and missing her university course in the process. Sometimes you say things that you don't, don't mean. mean. In the heat of the moment. Yeah. That's okay. 
I've asked Dr Caroline Wells, a clinical psychologist specialising in hoarding and family issues who I've worked with before, to come and talk to them. I want to see if she can help the family build some bridges. Vicky, what about you? What, what, what's it like for you? It's been very frustrating, like, living here, but then you want to move out, but then you want to stay because you're worried that if you move out, things will be worse, or... That's, that's how I feel. I'm only living here because I don't want things to go worse. And I'm trying to help you, but you don't even see that I'm helping you. Like, I had to miss uni today she just to sort me. out... That's the only reason why I was shouting, because you don't listen to what I was saying. Maybe at first, I, I don't shout at first, but then when you carry on not listening, that's when my temper goes higher. Don't want to move. You want to move? But you can't move. Why? She wants to move to a bigger house. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. She says she wants to live in a bigger house because there's no space in here. But, but then at the same time, this house is really big. So you sort of think even if you had a bigger house, your mum would fill it anyway. Yeah. I'm wondering if there is something or a way that you would like to be helped, either by Vicky or by someone else or, you know. No one is them I have. To help me. Exactly. That's the point I'm trying to say. If I leave, who is going to help you? If I leave, who's going to help pay the stuff or even support you in trying to sort out your house and stuff? That's what I always say to you. And that's why I'm still here. Being amongst the tension which hoarding brings to any household really takes me back to my own childhood and the stress I felt with my mum. I mean, I don't know how you keep a brave face on throughout the whole stuff. Before I used to think that back over the years, I used to think my mum hated me. I used to think she never loved me. Like, because she's never, like, hugged me or give her, she's always saying negative stuff. But over the years, when I started to understand and research, I've like realized that she does. Of course she I won't be clothed, I won't be no. sheltered. I mean, I remember the days when I was living at home, I'd get so frustrated with my mum and we'd have screaming matches, you know, we'd have massive rows. Mm. She would blame me, I would blame her. And, but she's still my mum, she's still your mum. Mm -hmm. It's just so frustrating and um, can see how frustrating it is for Vicky. This is hurting her and, oh gosh, the whole thing today, like the row that they had, Vicky was trying to prevent them from being evicted. She is the parent in this situation and those kind of things used to happen all the time to me. Vicky's strained home life brings back so many memories of my own upbringing. My mum filled our five bedroom house to the brim with her possessions throughout my childhood. But with a lot of help, she's made amazing progress. And this year is the first time in a decade we can celebrate Christmas with her in her home. The fact that we can all go there, we can sit around a table and have Christmas dinner as a family there. I couldn't have even imagined that. You know, if you had said to me three years ago or four years ago that we'd be doing this, I'd have laughed. I know Mum's been working really hard to get things ready for us all to go round there and, you know, this is something special. I really want Mum to understand just how proud I am of the journey she's made to this point and for her to enjoy the day with her family. Hi, Mum. Hello. Merry Christmas. Mm. Cheers. 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 Che
Even though, know, you know, it's not perfect, at least it's better than having it in your old bedroom. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> sure. Got all that nice I do think that you've done amazingly well. When I look at this house, compared to what it was like, I mean, can you remember what it was like a year and a half ago or two years ago? We wouldn't even been able to stand here. Mm. Have you missed any of that stuff that's gone? Have you? A few things that I remember. And I think, oh, I want to look at that now. Have you been bringing more stuff in that to the house? Well, yeah, but not so much stuff. And I have got rid of some. Are you able to deal with it better then? Sometimes, but not all the time. Oh. Raw cooking classes. Three course cooking, dinner raw. masterclass. That's lovely, thank you very much. At least that won't take up space. Exactly. Enjoying Christmas with Mum like this really gives me hope that Vicky and Janet and Olive might be able to do the same in their homes one day. Now I'd say this is almost normal. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost normal. But who wants to be almost, normal? Almost clear. Let's put it that way. Yeah. As the winter begins to bite in Brighton, Olive is still working with me and Andy at her own pace to move her hoard from the hallway so she can access her living room and kitchen. As ever, she wants to make sure she checks every single item. What's in there? There was another newspaper. Yeah, but I've probably put it in there for a reason. Oh, OK. See, well, that's why I'm saying. That bag, OK, OK. But that bag was falling apart, so I'll put it in another bag for yeah. you. It's Is that all right? OK, OK, it's a bit wet, though. Is that what you... Although Olive is vetting everything that leaves the hall, the fact that she's open to letting me in shows how much progress she's made. Which one's going in, one at a time? I'll go. Because you won't get more than one. No, well, no, exactly. Take that in. Well, fill it up. I'm going to fill it up. Brilliant. That's a bag of clothes. There we go. Check yeah. us another bag. After many weeks of working with her, I realise how huge this whole process is for her. We've made a little bit of headway now and we're trying to get through that way. I've managed to get quite a lot off the top and get through there, but it looks, to be honest, let me see if I can reach. It looks, no, I can't quite reach, pretty full back there as well. My big worry is that I don't think Olive's going to be able to let much go. I mean, maybe she'll come round, but right now she still wants to keep everything. It's a lot to do. It's a lot to do. Given any opportunity, Olive will always return to her first love of recycling. Her biggest thrill is when she can exchange her tin for money, which she gives to charity. So when Andy offers to take a load of cans to the recycling plant, she jumps at the chance. Oh, thank God I'm going to get rid of those cans. It's going to make it a bit easier to out the upper end of the stage, right? Olive started her recycling when she was in the Navy during the war, when make do and mend was a way of life. You had 165 kilos. What? Yeah. 165 kilos? Right. Good gracious. That's a lot. How much? £29.50. Oh, good. And yeah, I'm buying this um, thing for the St John's ambulance for the homeless. Yeah, thank you very much. So all Dave's hard work has been rewarded because they've now been recycled. Raising money from her recycling is what keeps Olive out in freezing temperatures in the garden, painstakingly categorising her cans, whilst inside her house gets overrun. Shut me long, be good, and don't let anyone come in, will you? <laughs> I'm uh, not loopy. <laughs> I'm not loopy. And you need just someone to talk to. I wanted to remind her just how much she's helping the causes she donates to and to really find out what that means to her. She's been commended for her efforts at one local charity, but she's never seen the plaque they've put up in her honour. Thank you. Right. In we come. And this is where we look, do we? Oh, let's have a look. There you are. 
Brighton PDSA Pet Aid Hospital expresses sincere gratitude to Olive Taylor, who funded their pharmaceuticals throughout 2001. Wow! <laughs> that must make you feel incredibly proud. Amazing, yeah. I can't believe that I am actually on there. The more time I spend with Olive, the more I realise just what an extraordinary life she lives. Uh, I've got to, I've got to climb up because yeah. I'm a short ass. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Although she's never been married, Olive has told me she lost her fiance in the war. If Roland hadn't got killed in the war, I would have been married when I was 21. We wanted seven children, and because uh, I was an only child, and there were a big family of Roland, seven, and um, we didn't know anything about sex. We didn't even know how it happened. You see, that was what. Uh, 70 years ago, see, wasn't it? 70 years ago. So after Roland died, you never yeah. met anybody? I didn't want to know men, you know, Roland had died and there was nobody like him, you know, as well when you're young and you get engaged, that's what it's like, isn't it, you know? Bye, Olive. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Ugh. Come on, Tobe. Right, twice oh, cold. Cold when you're coming here. What? I just really enjoyed hanging out with Olive today. She's had such a fascinating life. And you just kind of think, how on earth have you managed to get into this dreadful situation? But then also when she was when she was talking about her fiance who died, but she never found anyone quite like him. And what's going through my mind when she's saying that is, my God, that is a massive hole in your life that you're trying to fill with all this stuff. In South London, Vicky is managing to keep her mum's hoarding out of her bedroom, while Dr Caroline Wells is working more practically with Janet in the rest of the house. Janet, are you going to, are you going to keep that or can we make space by, by giving that to a charity shop? Put it in the In the charity shop? Yeah. Okay, well done. Fantastic, look at all that space you've just made. Mm, nice. How does it feel? It's nice. It's not it's good? Bad. Yeah. It's not bad. It's a big deal. It's really good. Despite some progress, as the sessions continue, the same old wounds are quickly opened between mother and daughter. How do you feel that we've progressed along that goal? Do you feel you've got a bit more space to, to dance around if you want to? In my to? room, yes. What's it like seeing, uh, seeing Vicky's room like this? It's nice. Yeah. Are you happy for her to have to have this room, or does it make you feel a bit uneasy? It's good. It's good like this. Yeah. Mm. For now, I understand that in order for her to to be able to um, tidy or get rid of some of the stuff is to do it together. So Vicky will help you clear stuff if you want I'll her to. I'll be Caroline. She can be Caroline, she can be me. <laughs> Why are you giving me some dirty look? <laughs> and she can help you, you know, if you want to do it by yourself, that's fine. Or if you want to so do it by yourself... So that means she doesn't want me to do it then? I see your face already saying you don't want me to do it. I just find it really difficult. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I can't do it. What happened to her? She's crying. <laughs> what do you think about listening to? I don't know. I don't know. 
Vicky's sort of saying that she, mm. you know, wants to mm. communicate with you and have a relationship. And mm. It's tricky, isn't it? I'm going to go and see if she's okay, okay? Well, yeah. She, okay. It's tricky to talk about, huh? Yeah, that's why it's, it's so hard. It's very complicated mm -hmm. because I don't want to. I don't want to turn out like this. I don't want to be living like this. Plastic. Yeah, no, keep. It's brittle, look, it's, it's snapping. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. wow. Get rid of it. At Olive's, two months in, and despite checking everything, she's making good progress. Well, it's, it's been slow and uh, but steady. So it's doing it Olive's way because if she's not happy, she'll tell you where to go anyway and clear off. So, But we are getting there. It's yeah, just we've taking. Lost, we've lost a tin of tuna. We've lost a tin of tuna. I don't think. Oh, yeah, got another that's one. marmalade there. That can be used. July 1998. That's all right. That's not all right. Of course it is. It's only that's sugar. 15 years out of date. That is only sugar. Hi, Olive. Hello. And when I arrive, I'm amazed at what's been achieved inside. Well, you haven't got as much stuff behind the door as you had before. You couldn't even open the door last time I was here. Uh, couldn't <gasps> we? No. This is amazing. The fact that we're both stood here. Three of us. In your hall. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a miracle. It is, isn't actually. It? And what have, do you think? Sorry. It was, it was up to here. Yeah. And all the wallpaper was on the top of it. <laughs> and Sorry. you can get to the light switches and, oh, yeah, and the stairs. The, you can actually see the stairs. The first. Even though it's real progress, when I go to the tent, it becomes clear where everything has gone. So this is all of this in here just come out of your little hallway. Yeah. I think it would be quite a good idea to do a bit of taking stuff out and a bit of taking stuff out of here as well, like sorting it, letting it go on to where it's got to go, because otherwise you're going to run out of space in here and then you won't be able to do any organising because it will be too full. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Not, um, you, we don't have to if you don't feel like it today. Well, I can't be bothered today. You can't be bothered? <laughs> not today. No, not really, not today. Do you think there'll be a day that you can be bothered? Well, I would rather clear the stairs so it's a clear space mm. than start going through stuff here. The thing is, while, whilst it's like this, you've actually got room, haven't you, to work in here yeah. or to work once we get through to the back room, to work yeah. in there and do the sorting. Well, no, I don't think you can sort it inside. You've got to bring it out. Um, Go on, see if you can think of another excuse to get out of it. Well, it's no good of sorting stuff here if we don't know where, where it's got to go. I'm worried Olive is merely moving her hoard from one place to another. Like many hoarders, she's being a perfectionist about clearing, when in reality, it will be better just to sort stuff to go and stuff to stay. Back inside the house, she lets me see upstairs for the first time, and it's a whole other world of hoarding. Where are you? I'm up here. How far? I'm just on the landing. Oh, you're on the landing. You'd squeeze through. That's where. So I, I can used see to your feed. bathroom there. That's where I used to feed Toby. Upstairs is every bit as bad as the hallway. Of the four rooms up here, three are inaccessible, including the bathroom. Every space is packed with clothes, plastic bags and old furniture. Although you can just squeeze into Olive's room, only a tiny sliver of bed is left free. And that's where you sleep, is it? I just... sleep, it's a double bed, but I use it as a single bed. It's only about that long, the bit that you've got to lie on. It's not. Do you I put your put, legs up? I can put my feet right down. It's hard to imagine that Olive grew up in this house and that these rooms were once her childhood bedroom and her parents' room. My dad, he was lovely. He really was. I mean, he, when I had homework, he would make me 
sit there until I'd done it. Then he'd check it for me. If there was something he thought uh, wasn't you know, good grammar or something, he'd say, now, my girl, just sit there, read your thing through, and see what mistakes you've made. So you were And I used yourself. to say, oh, Dad, you are awful. Whatever I do, you find I've made a mistake. Well, he said, I'm never perfect. And, I, and he said, you're not perfect. He said, you've got to learn by your mistakes. I can remember he, he used to make me sit at that table in the back room. That was here, in this house? Mm. Oh. Yeah. But what would, he, what would he think? Oh, my God, what's the hell's happened with this house? Ah, oh, can't have this. We'll sort this out. What, would, what advice would your dad give to you now about changing things around the house, if, if that's what you wanted to do? Well, I just want, would want to do what he wants to do, clear everything out and put it back in the right place. And anything we didn't want, you know, find a source to give it to. Thank you for letting me come and have a look upstairs, Olu. Well, it's not much to see. No, but it's interesting to see... Only wallpaper falling off everywhere yeah. and cobwebs. I'm the first person Olive has let see upstairs in her house in decades. I know from my own experience with my mum's hoarding how difficult that first step is. And you needn't be ashamed, and you shouldn't be oh, ashamed. I am, because um, uh, my parents wouldn't, you know, would be disgusted to think that I was living like that. It's probably quite painful to think that your parents would be disgusted with you. You know, you, you wouldn't want to think about it, so it's much easier to, you know, do the normal day-to-day -day stuff. I do feel bad for Olive because today she told me that she was ashamed of her house and I don't think she should be ashamed. And she is now accepting help which is a massive step forward. And I think in the future, she'll be able to access other help as well. Four months since starting work with Janet in South London, Caroline and I are making one further push to get things moving out of the house. You will never need all these duvets. How many are you counting? I've, I've put up already about six duvets into the attic. And they love our together. Caroline works on Janet's attachment to the hundreds of items of clothing and bedding she hoards. And I work with Vicky on getting rid of her unwanted clothes. It's good that your mum's doing something. Yeah. Right, that's a big breakthrough already, so let's not forget that. I feel that we're just sort of moving stuff from one side of the room to the other. Yeah, she does a lot of moving stuff all the time. Does she? Yeah, it's like it's a job, even at night, for no reason. <laughs> Stay there, bags. Yeah. Okay. While Vicky and I get on with clearing clothes from her room, Janet responds by having a dramatically different reaction to Caroline's therapy. Do you want to get rid of those shoes? Yeah, yes, yeah. Hey, that's the first pair of shoes you've thrown away. What's that like? Oh, not bad. It's heavy. It's heavy. Hmm? I say it's heavy. It's fine. All this can go? Yeah. Like sporty, dancey type stuff. stuff. Patterned leggings. Jeans, pattern leggings. Then they said that all the luggage and everything that's in them in the living room can go. That's what she said. For the first time, Janet seems genuinely motivated to clear some of her huge hoard from the house. I hope she meant it. Strike while the iron's hot.
Janet, amazing. Yeah, how are you? Impressed. I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. You're doing really well. So am I right, did I hear right that the luggage and everything in them can go to the charity shop? It's fine, it's fine. That's brilliant. What's in all here? All the suitcase, all the suitcase. All the suitcase? Yeah. Nah, you're talking. So this stuff, yes. it's not your clothes. Uh -uh. Can I take this in the car to the charity? Okay, let me. Yeah? Yes? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Janet. <laughs> Give me a high five, girl. Are you tired oh, now? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting rid of this whole suitcase. Janet's being amazing and realising that actually it's weak, it's broken, it can go. Yes. With everything in it. Yes. <laughs> Let's take one in the Yeah. You take I'll one. take the other side. I got this. To me, to you, to me, to you. <laughs> That's it. Yeah? Yeah. Good for you. And that one? Yeah. Another suitcase down. Yeah, we finished. Finished? Yeah. We can put this whole bag to the charity? Yeah. Gosh, Victoria. How happy do you think Victoria's going to be? She's happy. She is happy. You've made her happy. I was shocked at the same time, but I've always believed that it would happen. Your mum is being amazing. Yes, mum, you're amazing. <laughs> Did you know that? Did you know that, Mom? Over the course of the day, we cleared dozens of bags and suitcases from Janet's. I think she maybe saw you and, and she was motivated by you and inspired by you. From me clearing out my stuff. You know, we left her to her own devices a little bit and I think once she started clearing, she then got into a real role of it and started to feel that space like she said it feels less heavy and that's just I think that was great I can't even describe what a big thing this is it's like somebody turned on the light and she suddenly realized that it was easy to let go of stuff And there's huge progress in Brighton too. Olive has made it to the back room and kitchen for the first time in over 16 years. 15 denier tights. Oh, they're old. Wow. How does she that be in there? Beautiful dress, look. God. Probably my mum's. Ha ha. Ha ha. Look what I have found. My wedding hat. Was that really? But you didn't get married? No, it's a, my hat I wear at a wedding. I see what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> I've come to see for myself how the house has changed and to find out how much of the hoard she's actually getting rid of. Oh, wow, we've broken through to the back. Oh, my word, but we're in the back room. Yeah. This is a lovely sunny room, isn't it, Olive? Oh, yes. When's the last time that you were able to just walk through the hall and come and use this room? 1996. What did it feel like the first time you were able to just walk into this room after all those years? Well, I couldn't believe it. I thought, um, where's all this stuff come from? Where, you know, how's all this got in here? So was this a bit of a shock? Yeah, it was. I, yeah, because... Um, I've no idea. I've no idea. What it all is? No. Or, or it's obviously mine, I suppose. OK, so the plan is then to get rid of the stuff that you don't want once mm. you've gone through everything. But there's the vast majority of everything that came out of that hall is now in the tent, isn't it, in the back garden? Three quarters, yeah. Three quarters. And a quarter is recycled, yeah. I mean, I think it's quite fair to say apart from recycling, all we've really done is move stuff from here to the tent, mm. isn't it? We haven't started sorting yet. 
and you haven't been in this room for so many years, it sort of begs the question, do you actually need any of the stuff that's in here? Of course I do. Well, you haven't needed it over those last how no, many years. No, it's my mother's stuff. I've lived in this house since I was eight and a half years old. And um, there's a lot of memories in it. And So there's stuff in here that you really treasure? Oh, yes. Yeah. Photographs, but yeah. whether they're still here or not, I don't know. With the marquee outside slowly filling up and a house full of treasures that's captivating Olive inside, I'm worried about how she'll ever start reducing her hoard. Janet and Vicky are progressing well at home, but I want to bring them away from the house to see if it's easier for them to bond. Vicky's passion is singing, but she's never sung in front of her mum. I want Janet to see her daughter in a different light. Recognise that voice? He's Victoria. So. On the track, ay, 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 yeah. Remix. Keep, keep, keep the faith up. It is the only way it's gonna get you higher. If you don't got it, if you didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm getting better. I know I'm getting higher. Na, 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 na. I keep on going, I keep on moving, never stopping, like I know the tire. I keep on going, you must be very I keep proud on of moving, her. never stopping till I retire. Wow, I haven't seen my, it feels weird seeing my mum here. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> oh, Show off now. Yeah. Now you, you had your turn. Do you know what it was? It, it was amazing. Like I, I never thought I would have the courage to actually sing in front of her. And I think we need to like have a bit more of a bond when we go out together. We rarely do that. But obviously, it's, it's time. I know Rome is not built in one day, but. We've, there's potential, we can definitely build this relationship and bond again. It will be slow progress, of course. It's, you know, it's not a quick fix. It's not something that Janet can change overnight. But I think with Vicky's support and understanding and ongoing therapy, Janet can make some big changes and instead of always being preoccupied with everything that's going on in the house, hopefully she can start to enjoy her children and feel proud of them and appreciate what they are doing for her as well. And be a mum to them. <laughs> I've come to Brighton for one last visit. Hi, Olive. Andy and I are continuing to help Olive reacquaint herself with the house she lost to her hoard. You've got about 5,000 tea bags in there. Oh, well, Thai keep... food tea bags as well. Yeah, we'll keep them in there. When do we want to uh, actually start throwing some things out, Olive? I told you I'm not throwing anything out till I've gone through them. They all go out in the tent. That's one thing I know you've always got plenty of, Olive, is bags. What I want is for her to participate in doing it herself. I want her to be able to make the decisions and I want her to be able to maintain the progress that she's made and keep moving forward. Otherwise, the whole thing's pointless. So although it's, <laughs> it sort of seems like we haven't got that far, I think it's been huge. This is huge for Olive. 
can you read that to me? Yeah, of course I can. Where's it from? 31st of December 1963. Dear Mr and Mrs Taylor, thank you for your letter. My mother and I are so sorry oh, to hear Mrs Taylor is unwell and we hope she will... Oh, that was when she first had a recover. stroke. Was it? She had a stroke there. Let's have a look in here. Okay, ready? I think they're my sheets. Yeah, I reckon these are my sheets when I was engaged. The navy ones. That was my bottom drawer. That was my bottom drawer. God, it's true. It's like an Aladdin's cave. Yeah. Hello, sweetheart. Are you coming in? <laughs> He's my best friend. Faithful friend. <coughs> Is it coming to bed? Me? Hey? Yeah. You going to bed? Good boy. That's it. Good night. Good boy. Mm, my mum. Not night. Hopefully she will realise that she doesn't really need that stuff and actually it's just weighing her down. She can let go of it, she can be free. That's what I hope for for Olive. Put that up there. Now. hope that it will be the start of something for Olive, that she will carry on down this new road and eventually get somewhere that's a lot happier place for her. Yeah, nice and cosy, ready to go to sleep after having a busy day. I'm just waiting to uh, Finish downstairs and then get this lot sorted up here. Night night, Tope. 